What is up everybody? Welcome to How to Pass the Math FSA. This is the fifth grade edition. We're on lesson two right now. This is writing and interpreting numerical expressions. So it's going to be really awesome today. Um, in the last episode we solved or evaluated numerical expressions and now we're going to write and interpret them. So it's going to be awesome! Let me teach you! Example one. Which expression could represent the following phrase? Divide 15 by 3, then subtract 2. So the very first thing that I'm doing is dividing 15 by 3. So 15, I'm going to take that and divide it by 3. And then I'm going to subtract 2. Okay, I could write it like this. I could also, because my first step was to divide by 3, it could also be written like this. So, this does not match, A. 15 divided by, and then in parentheses, 3 minus 2, that would be subtracting 2 from 3 first. That's not right. 15 divided by 3 minus 2, that matches over here. And 3 divided by, three divided by 15 would end up being a fraction. That's not what I put over there, so C is our answer. Moving right along to example two, it says which statement describes the expression 16 plus half times eight minus six in parentheses? <laughs> okay, well, here I'm finding the difference. I would do this first. I'm finding the difference of six, eight and six. So eight minus six would be the two then I'm finding half of that difference, and then I'd be adding 16. So let me work out which each one of these is. It says half of the difference, so half of the difference of 6 from 8, so 8 minus 6, because it's 6 from 8, okay, added to 16, so plus 16. That looks very similar to what I have up here, because what I'm doing is I'm adding this part and that part. So technically this plus 16 could be over there. So this one is looking pretty good. B, subtract half the quantity of 8 and 6 from 16. So I have 16, and I'm subtracting half the quantity of... 8 and 6. All right, that looks nothing like what I have up there. So B is not the answer. All right, now let's take a look at C. C says the sum of 16 and half the product of 8 and 6. So you got to take it one step at a time to create or write this numerical expression. So the sum of 16 16 and half the product of 8 and 6. Let me go back and make sure that C was what I wrote. What, what I saw was what I wrote. So I see the sum, the sum of 16 and half the product, so half of the product, product means that I'm multiplying 8 times 6. Well, here I was, excuse me, here I was subtracting 8 minus 6, so C is not an answer. And now D, let's take a look at it. Half of 8 and added to 16 minus 6. So half of 8 added to 16 minus 6. Well, I wasn't adding 8 and 16 together. I was subtracting 8 minus 6, so that is wrong. The only one that makes sense is this, and that's because, technically because of the commutative property, because I could do 16 plus half of 8 minus 6. They're the same thing. We're adding these two things together. It's just flipped. OK, 
Okay, all right, we're on example three. It says an expression, hey everybody in Texas, an expression is described in words. The numbers three and five are added and the sum is then multiplied by four. Create the expression using numbers and symbols. So this is an equation editor problem. I'm gonna show my work over here. Um, and you would probably need to be, sh not probably, definitely need to be showing your work on paper because while you're taking your computer-based test. Okay, it says the numbers three and five are added. So three and five are added. And the sum is then multiplied by four. So times four, but here's the deal. The first thing that happened was that the three and the five are added. So I need to put parentheses here. If I don't, then because of the order of operations, I would have to do five times four first. But it doesn't say that five and four are multiplied first. It says that three and five are added first, and then that sum is multiplied by four. So that's not right, don't do that. You have to have those parentheses in there. Okay, so I would write, I'm going to write three times five in parentheses, sorry, three plus five in parentheses times four. To do that in your equation editor, you would press parentheses, bloop, three plus five, close your parentheses, multiplied by four, and you're done. Last one, party people. This is example four, and it says Miss Lou, shout out to Miss Lou. Miss Lou described an expression in words. Subtract, she says subtract seven from 22 and then divide by two. Craig wrote the expression 22 minus 7 divided by 2. Do you agree with Craig's expression? Explain your reasoning. This is an open response thing. This is where you are going to have to type in your answer. So make sure that you are using capital letters, periods, all that good stuff. If you don't know how to do capital letters and periods and all that good stuff on the computer, you need to ask your parents, okay? Whoever's watching you at home, get them some help. Um, all right, so Miss Lou described this expression. She said, subtract seven from 22. I'm taking seven away from 22, and then I'm going to divide by two, okay? However, the first thing that she said to do was subtract seven from 22. If I don't do those parentheses first, where I wanna subtract first, then that means I have to go right away to 7 divided by 2 and then do 22 minus that quotient. That is not what Ms. Lou is asking me to do. She wanted me to do 7 from 22 first. So when Craig writes 7 divided by, I'm sorry, 22 minus 7 divided by 2, like we said, we'd have to do this first. So do you agree with his expression? No, I do not agree because my whole answer has to fit inside this box. I do not agree because Craig needs a set of parentheses parentheses around 22 minus 7. Because he must subtract first. Don't forget your period. Notice my capital N. Notice my capital N. You have to press shift capital N and don't forget your period. Okay. Okay, everybody, before I leave, let me leave you with this motivational message. Quick one today, it says strive for progress, not perfection. Don't get wrapped up and stuck on trying to be perfect. You are human, you are going to make mistakes. Your job is to learn from those mistakes and make progress, okay? It's all about making that growth. If you get an answer wrong, it's okay, it's not the end of the world learn from it. That is how you grow. 
that is how you improve. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next episode.